Okay. All right, so everybody, welcome back. We're doing a um, Switch games tier list. Um, gonna be ranking some games here. I'm gonna be doing. I don't know what this one twelve bullshit is. Um, I'm gonna be doing like big box, like triple A games. I'm not doing like indie games, like Cadence of High Roller Golf Story or anything like that. Um, also, I want to point out that I haven't played every single thing on this list, so. I have this category here that says haven't played but want to. I want to point out that every single thing that's in this category, except for two, I own, but I haven't gotten around to playing it yet. So Astral Chain, uh, this, Dragon Quest, where's Fire Emblem Warriors, Octopath Traveler, this is one of the two that I don't own, as well as yes, this. This, this, okay. So, these are all probably, especially Dragon Quest and Xenoblade are probably like S-tier games. Like, let's be real here. Like, I haven't heard too many people talk about Astral Chain, but I have it sitting right 10 feet away from me. Same thing with Dragon Quest, Fire Emblem, and these five. But, <laughs> sorry, all six of these. One, two, three. Okay, my bad, it was five. All five of these, but I just haven't gotten around to playing them yet, because I have too many games on my Switch, and too many games on my PS4. And I'm also going to put Must Buy. These aren't necessarily my favorite games for the Switch. One of them is my favorite game for the Switch. So, Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, and Smash Bros. Like, you probably already knew what I was going to put there, if you know anything about the Switch. Like, I don't, I don't even need to discuss this. Like, if you have a Switch, and you don't own... At least one of these. Go out and buy them. They are fantastic games. 10 out of 10, and I can't recommend them enough. Like, these are the games that you buy a Switch for. Everything else is just it's just cake. Like, frosting on the cake. So, we have S through D. I really wanted to do, like, must buy, can buy, all that shit, but I, I don't care. And I typically don't like putting anything above S, because, like, there are games that I prefer to Zelda and Smash Bros. But... Like, you buy a Switch to get these games, so I, I can't not put them at the highest. So, we're just going to go in order. I'm not going to go D, C. I'm just going to go right in order what it is down here. 1, 2, Switch. <laughs> you buy it. This came out during launch, you know, same time as or Breath of the Wild. So people bought it because it came out during launch, and it's just... It's like Wii Play or Wii Sports, but, like, not fun at all. <laughs> Like, it shows off what the Joy-Cons can do, which is cool. You spend, like, 15 minutes playing with playing it, and then you just don't ever play it again. That's all I have to say about that. Animal Crossing New Horizons. I haven't played this since probably July, but I don't know. I was disappointed by it. I much prefer New Leaf and the, and the GameCube version. I didn't play Wild World or, um... Was Wild World the one... No, Wild World was the DS, and then City Folk was the Wii. Okay. Yeah, it's... It's okay. I think the crafting in it is is okay. It's not bad. Meant like everybody was wanting an an Animal Crossing game for home console since we haven't had one since the GameCube. But I would much rather play New Leaf any day than this. I think most people can agree that New Leaf is better than New Horizons. And if you don't, then you haven't played New Leaf. <laughs> Sorry. And then. Like, it's cool. I feel like there's a lot more waiting around for bullshit in this game. Like, there's a lot more, like, uh, like scripted waiting days events than there were in New Leaf. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's because I haven't played New Leaf in a while, but this game is just, it's B-tier. Like, if you like Animal Crossing, you'll probably like it, and I do like it. That's why it's in B-tier, but I don't know. Arms, <laughs> Up, <laughs> update your shit, Nintendo. <laughs> you put Min Min in Smash, but you won't update Arms. Get the fuck out of here. All right, Bayonetta 2. That's us too. I didn't really didn't want to put Bayonetta 1 on here, because Bayonetta 1 is on the PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One, as well as Wii U and Switch. But Bayonetta 2, I, I probably like it more than Mario Odyssey, in all honesty. Like, this game kind of blew me away. Like, I, I, both ha I still have my copy of it for the Wii U, and I have my copy of it for the uh, Switch over there. This game is my favorite hack and slash game ever made. Like, it has such good combat. The story in it is it's a lot better than the first one, but it's nothing really like that special. Characters are okay, but like man, the combat, the setting, like it just does everything so right. I have never played a game 
that has better combat than this. Like, when I played Nier Automata, which was after I played this game, it felt so weird to me, and Nier Automata is, like, this, this, like, oh, like, this, uh, really well-respected, really, like, game, and I did like it, but its combat has nothing on Bayonetta 2, and Bayonetta is hot. Alright, Captain, oh, yeah, by the way, there are gonna be some ones that are Wii U ports, so I'll just go through that right now, so Bayonetta 2 was, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze was, Hyrule Warriors... Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, and Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Now, I want to say that I haven't put everything on here, because there are games that I haven't played. So, like, Super Mario Party, Mario Tennis, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, uh, like, games that I just, like, I, I just haven't played. Pokemon Tournament. Like, I, I should have said that at the beginning, but I didn't put those on here. Like, they're, they're fun, but I, I didn't put them on here. So Captain Toad, I'm put that in B tier. Captain Toad is, it's actually really fun. It's a really fun puzzle game. It's an interesting puzzle game because Mario, you know, also known as Jumpman, is really good at jumping. And that's what he does in like every single one of his games. But Captain Toad can't jump. And it really actually makes it, uh, it's like a platformer puzzle game. Not as good as something like Portal, <laughs> but it's really, I don't think it was trying to be Portal. Which, if it was, then you fucking suck. But, at least compared to Portal. But, this game, it's fun. Like, it's it's nothing really amazing or spectacular, but I got my money's worth out of it. This is a lot cheaper than a lot of the other games on this list. Like, everything else here is, like, $60. Except for maybe Octopath Traveler, but this game's, like, you should usually find it for, like, 30 to 40 bucks. It's fun. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is A tier. This game is really hard, it's really fun, and, like, it's got great music, it's got great atmosphere, it's Donkey Kong. Like, if you play Donkey Kong on a Super Nintendo or Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii, you will feel right at home with this game. Like, I think it is one of the best 2D platformers ever created. Nah, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far, but, like, it's like an 8, yeah, it's like, it's like right outside the best, in my opinion. That's why it's only an 8 tier. Fire Emblem Three Houses, put that up there in S tier. I know a lot of people don't like Fire Emblem. Um, the reason why a lot of people don't like Fire Emblem is because of two reasons. One, it's because they've never played it, and two, it's because um, it's because uh, how many characters there are of Fire Emblem and Smash. Um, this is the only Fire Emblem character. Uh, sorry, only Fire Emblem game I've ever played. I didn't play Conquest, Fates. What was it? what was it was it Awakening is that what it was called on the 3DS that a lot of people really liked? This is the only one that I've played and it's a must buy. Like it's a strategy RPG. You don't see a whole lot of those on consoles nowadays, but you know since Switch is a combination of both a home console and a uh, portable, it makes sense that it would be on here. There's also another one on here as well, which we'll get to later. But this is probably the best strategy RPG I think I've ever played. A lot of people like cite stuff like um Advance Wars or XCOM, stuff like that. And those games are great too. I would also put them in S tier, but I think that Fire Emblem Three Houses is a step above both of those. Hyrule Warriors. So at the time of this video is being recorded, Hyrule uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, the sequel to Hyrule Warriors, and the prequel to Breath of the Wild has just come out. But I both haven't played it yet and don't own it, so I have no reason to rank it. I haven't. I've avoided spoilers and stuff, so I don't get spoiled by it, obviously. So, yeah. Next up, we have. So I'm gonna put that in A tier. Uh, Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors is fun. Yeah, if you like Dynasty Warriors games, you're going to feel right at home, because obviously it is a it is a Dynasty Warriors game, but set in the Legend of Zelda universe, which is very which is very unique for Legend of Zelda. Usually it's like this RPG, you know, this battling, and using magic, and maybe using mass occasionally, and stuff. And this is, this is really different, but I think they captured the essence of Zelda quite well within the Dynasty Warriors universe, and it just feels really good. Next up, we have Kirby Star Allies. Alright, if you would have asked me this at release, I would have put it at C, but I'm putting it at B now, because they updated this game, they added a bunch of shit, added new characters, added game modes, and like, 
This game at launch was a C tier game. I bought it at launch and I thought it was C tier, but now that they've updated it and made it better, it's B tier. It's it's Kirby. Like Kirby has always been one of my favorite video game franchises. Like Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland is probably my favorite game of all time, but this game is it's not that. And I think the problem with it is that it came out after Planet Robobot, Triple Deluxe, and um Return to Dreamland. This game is not any of those three games. Like, this this game is, is awful compared to those games. Like, no cap. But, it's fun. Like, if you're not... Like, if this is, like, one of your first Kirby games you've ever played, it's probably maybe higher, but... Coming from someone who's played a bunch of Kirby games, it's B tier. Link's Awakening, the remake, that's A tier. Um, and the reason it's A tier and not higher is because, um... It's just not... I, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to say that. I actually just haven't put that much time into it. I probably put about three or four hours into it. I really like the art style. I really like the movement, the combat. It feels so much better than how it did on the original Game Boy, and the Game Boy Color to me. But like, it's fun. It's really fun. I like. I think it has the most interesting art style out of any Zelda game. And this is coming from someone whose favorite Zelda game is Wind Waker. So, you know, the most interesting art style. But. That's fun. Luigi's Mansion 3. I'll also put that in A tier. This game's fun. Like, it's really good. Like, it's way better than the 3DS Luigi's Mansion, but I wouldn't say it's as good as the first one. Like, this game, from a gameplay sense, is better than the first one, I would say. But the first one on the GameCube, you know, just Luigi's Mansion, has the best atmosphere out of any Mario game. Like... I just, like, when I was a kid, I was scared of it, and now I play it, and I'm just like, this is so much fun. Like, I avoided that game like the plague when I was little. But now that I'm an adult, I fucking love the first Luigi's Mansion. This game's good. It's actually a good sequel. Like, you'll feel right at home if you've ever played Luigi's Mansion. I still have my copy of Luigi's Mansion sitting, like, eight feet away from me. So, it's a good game. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? Uh, no. Man, it's not my favorite kart racer of all time. It's not even my favorite Mario Kart of all time. My favorite is probably the Wii Mario Kart, but this game's great. Like, there's really nothing wrong with it. It's a step above the Wii U one, because this is one of the ones where it was a Wii U port. They fixed battle mode. They added new characters. They added new carts. Like, this game is is the best remake out of any of the Switch games because of what they did with it, so... I I really have nothing to say about this game. Like again, it's not my favorite kart racer of all time. The best kart racer of all time, no cap, is oh, by the way. I just realized something. Anyway, by the way, no cap, the best kart racer of all time is Sonic and Sega's All Stars Racing Transformed. Yes, it's a Mario Kart clone, but it does such a good job at doing it that it's my favorite. Mario Maker 2? Hmm. You know, I'm, I don't think there's going to be any, like, C tier, so... I'm going to delete... Hold up. Make this C. And then I'm going to delete this. Maybe I'll change it later, but... Okay. Mario Maker 2 is good. I don't think it has the lasting impression on me that the first Mario Maker had. When the first Mario Maker game came out, like, it was revolutionary. People went nuts for it. And in this game, it it does stuff that the first one didn't do. And it, like, it did make a bunch of changes that were really nice. I think the problem with it is that, like, the Wii U touchpad was perfect for Mario Maker 2. And using a controller to make levels isn't as fun. The levels themselves are, I mean, it depends on who's making them. But they can be fun. And they included a whole-ass Mario game, like a whole-ass Mario 2D platformer game in this game. Which is nice. But I think the problem with it is that it came out at a weird time. When uh, the original Mario Maker came out in 2015, like, Kaizo Mario games weren't as popular. But thanks to games like, um, like Ka that were Kaizo games, like Invictus, Grand Pooh World, Storks and Apes and Crocodiles, the song that I have playing in the background always is from Storks and Apes and Crocodiles, by the way. But now that, like, Kaizo is a lot bigger than it was, like, Mario Maker 2 just feels like such a downgrade because of how much stuff you're able to do with Lunar Dragon, the uh, program they used to make Mario levels. And it just it just doesn't have that lasting impression that, like, 
the first one did. But yeah. Mario and Rabbit's Battle Kingdom. This is a very good um strategy RPG. Like I said with Fire Emblem, there's gonna be another one. This game it's uh features the rabbits from Rayman, which is cool. Um this game is built for kids. Like anybody can pick up this game and just because it's for kids, I actually I th it doesn't mean it's not fun for adults. I think it's really fun actually. Like it's a good like uh play on get on, you know, play for like a couple hours, get off and then you know just have a good time. It's really good. Like it's not complicated, it's really easy to learn. It has good graphics as well as most of the games on this list, but yeah, if you're looking for an easy one, an easy game to play, then yeah. I'm really torn for these two games. Because I'm a massive Pokemon fan, and I put so many hours into Shield and this. but So this I'm going to put into B, because there's no end game, like... Like, with, uh, I, I do think this is the definitive way to play Gen 1, like, in my opinion. But, at least with, like, Fire Red and Leaf Green, you get, like, the Sevy Islands. In this game, there's none of that, which kind of sucks, but... I think this game is good. It combines Pokemon Go and the original Pokemon, uh, Red and Blue, very well together. Like, it's, it's actually really well made. The only problem I have with it, this is a massive problem, is that you can't play it with a Pro Controller. You can only play it with a Joy-Con, which sucks. But, Pokemon Shield... Put that an A tier. I think Pokemon Shield is a solid Pokemon game. It's not the best. It's not as good as like Black and White 2 or Platinum, which I think are the best ones, and Heart Gold Soul Silver. But this game's fun. If you would have asked me before Crown Tundra and um What's the other one? Isle of Armor came out. Okay, well before Isle of Armor came out, I would put it in B, but with Isle of Armor I'd put it in A, because I really did like Isle of Armor, but and I like Crown Tundra a lot, too. See, like, here's the thing. A lot of people hate it because there was no national decks and all this bullshit. And, like... See, I don't have a problem with them taking out Pokemon. Because that's what Nintendo... That's what they do with a lot of their Pokemon games. Is that, like... Obviously, they'll split them up between each game. But then there'll be, like, a third game or, like, a fourth game. Like, for example... In Gen 3, you needed Ruby, Sapphire, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Pokemon Coliseum... And XD on a fucking GameCube and not on your Game Boy in order to get all of the Pokemon without doing stuff like Game Shark and all that bullshit. This game, like, you just get, you know, one of, you probably don't even need, like, both of the games because of, like, things like the GTS and surprise trading and whatnot because you don't need fucking link cables in order to trade with people. You just need an internet connection. And, you know, due to things like Discord and, Stuff like that. You can easily find people online who are willing to trade you. And with the Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor, they added so many new Pokemon that, like... There are some that haven't been brought back, but the ones that they chose to bring back are good. There's really few. Like, the few that I like that I want back are Breloom and, um... Gliscor, but we didn't get them. But I'm rambling on at this point. I'm gonna stop talking about it. It's A tier. Splatoon 2. Splatoon 2 is fun. This is, like, um... This is, like, the multiplayer game on Switch that isn't Super Smash Bros. Like, obviously, like, having having a multiplayer game on Switch, like, and having Smash Bros. is kind of sus. But this game actually does really well. A lot of people like the first one. I actually never played the first one, but this game's fun. I like how, um, instead of doing, like, Team Deathmatch or shit like that, you do, it's usually, like, Capture the Flag or... No, is it Capture the Flag? I, I don't know. I don't often play those game modes. I play, like, Turf War a lot, which is, um, you have paint, and you have to get as much paint across the, uh, ground as possible, and whoever, whoever has the most amount of paint covered wins. Now, you can also kill people during that time, too, to stop them, but kills, like, they matter, they matter for your score, but they don't matter for you winning. So, what you personally score matters, but for winning, no, but if you're killing people, that means they're spraying less, which does basically help, so, there's that. This game has a great story, too. Like, this... Okay, the story itself isn't that good, but, like, the gameplay within the story is really fun, and they added the Octo expansion, which is really fun and really hard. This game, honestly, you'll get your money's worth when you play Splatoon 2. Like, I got no bunnies. I got no problems with it. Tokyo Mirage Sessions was a game I avoided on the Wii U. I didn't really avoid it. I just never had an interest in it, but this game's fun. Like, it's, uh... 
It's made by the same people as Persona, Atlas, and Shimagami Tensei. This combines uh, Shimagami Tensei elements and um, Fire Emblem characters, and I think it does really well. It has interesting combat for a JRPG, which, like, a JRPG combat usually isn't my favorite, but I think this one does it really well. Like, there's a couple other JRPG combats that I think work really well, like, specifically South Park, Sick of Truth, and Chrono Trigger. And this, these are probably my three favorite JRPGs that aren't, like, Pokemon. Like, because Pokemon is my favorite JRPG, but this game's fun. Like, you have uh, interesting characters, and, like, you're trying to become an idol and whatnot, and you're defeating demons, and you see a bunch of music videos here and there. It's fun. Like, it's got good graphics. It has a really good soundtrack. Look up Reincarnation from this game. Look up the Kyria version, but not the Tsubasa version. The Tsubasa version's good, but the Kyria one's better. And this game is fun. Like, if you like JRPGs and you like uh, music, this game is probably for you. Alright, so that's my list, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you disagree with me, you know, leave it in the comments. Say what you want. So, that's it. Peace.